In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries as we continue this Easter celebration. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the splendor of the Father, the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, and we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, <coughs> you alone are the Lord of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the great recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of your people that you have made your own, increase the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together, had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with, ex with exultation and sincerity of the heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to the number of those who are being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsible Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. I was hard pressed and was fallen, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joy shout for victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. The stone the builders rejected has become this cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Thanks, Thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is, he is good. good. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, 
to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the eyes of the church, we are still on Easter morning. These first eight days are considered mourning and so in the preface when I say on this day of the resurrection that's why and then this feast continues it's a full 50-day feast taking us <clears throat> from Easter to Pentecost our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles is the first of four summaries idealizing the life and summarizing the life of the early Christian community. Showing how that life of the early community continued to witness to the ministry, the mission, the ethical demands 
of the teaching of the risen Lord. Some of us have been in different places or have uh, ordered things and, and now rare, but I do order something online, they might say, now do you mind filling out this survey? Let us know <coughs> how, how we did. I think if we were to take those qualities mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles of what life ideally was like in the church, in the early church, it would still serve as a checklist for us today to look at those points and see where would we rate ourselves with regard to each of them. The first point mentioned is that the, they listened to the teaching of the apostles. That was important for that early community to hear the teaching of the apostles because they were the ones that Jesus had instructed and guided. And so by listening to their teaching, the early community was linked to the teaching of Jesus. St. Justin Martyr, in the year 150, when describing when the community gathered to celebrate Eucharist, it's interesting, he says, and as part of that celebration, we read from the memoirs of the apostles, those books called Gospels. And so it is still for us, the Gospels connect us to the life and ministry and teaching of Jesus, handed down to us through the apostles. It also says that the communal life was important to them because concern for others was important to the teaching and ministry of Jesus. And so it is in the early church, that communal life where we express our care, our concern for one another. The believers held all things in common. Now, that selling of the goods and depositing it into a common fund that was then used to care for others was voluntary, not mandatory. But what was mandatory was that there always be a concern for those who are in need and our willingness to share with those who are in need. And then the breaking of bread, the celebration of the Eucharist, which they did in those early days in their homes, in small groups. And then the prayers. Now, in the time of the apostles, the prayers were the prayers that they prayed as they went up to the temple. And it connected them with their Jewish roots. Our prayers still today connect us to our Jewish roots and our early Christian history and experience. All of those five qualities are really what it meant to follow the way. And that's what Christians were initially called, those who followed the way, the way of Jesus. And those qualities should still identify us today as church, as people striving to live the way of Jesus. Today's gospel, this appearance of Jesus to the disciples locked in that upper room. I think it's interesting that when you think about in John's gospel, Mary Magdalene has already come back and told them that she has seen the risen Lord. But evidently they didn't pay much attention to her because they are still frightened and locked in that upper room. Or when I thought about that a little bit more this week, I thought, well, maybe they did listen to her. 
and they were frightened. They were wondering what Jesus' response to them was going to be. Those who deserted him, those who abandoned him, those who betrayed him. Maybe that's why they were still nervous and locked in that upper room. And on that evening of the first day of the week, that Easter day, Jesus appears in their midst despite the fact that the doors are locked and says to them, peace be with you. But he also shows them his hands, his feet, because the nail marks are important to help them identify that this is Jesus, but it also says that the risen Lord appears to them not as a powerful victor, but as a humble, suffered servant and appears in their midst. And the first thing he says to them, peace be with you. And that's important for them to hear because it's the peace that only the presence of Jesus can give. They have been in fear, in chaos, in doubt. And so the first thing Jesus wants to do is assure them of his presence and the peace that that can bring or does bring. And then he missions them. As the Father has sent me, so I send you giving them their marching orders, if you will, that they now are to carry on the ministry, the mission of Jesus. And he breathed on them. And in John's Gospel, that's important because in creation, God breathed the very breath of God into Adam and Eve, and that's when they became human. And now... <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus breathes the breath of the Spirit into the disciples, sharing his risen life with them, that they might now go out and be witnesses to his love, his compassion, his forgiveness for others. It says that one of them, Thomas, called Didymus, was not present when Jesus appeared in the upper room that Easter evening. And here I want you to say, cut me a little slack. I want to practice a little Jewish midrash. And in the Jewish tradition, when a piece of the puzzle is missing, you get to kind of imagine what that piece was that is missing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, when, why is Thomas not there? All the others are there. All the others are locked in out of fear. Now, and just because my first name is Thomas, don't, don't feel like I'm cutting him a lot of slack more than normal. But, but I think, I like to think that maybe Thomas isn't there because he's the only one brave enough to go outside. They're all still quaking in fear in that upper room. Thomas has been able to go outside. I think, though, there's justification for that because if we go back earlier in John's Gospel, when Martha and Mary send word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill, calling for Jesus to come to be with them. The disciples say to Jesus, when he talks about going up to Jerusalem, the disciples say, Lord, wait, whoa, remember, the last time we were up there, they wanted to stone you. Are you sure that you need to go up there? Thomas says, let us go up with him even to die. So, maybe Thomas is the brave one, the one outside. But, a week later, he is with them, 
when the Lord returns. Now, when the Lord came that first Easter to those gathered in that upper room, can you imagine their relief when he didn't criticize, he didn't make them feel guilty, he just offered them his peace. And now he appears again, and the first thing again is, peace be with you. Offering them that peace that his presence gives, and this time for Thomas. And Jesus accepts Thomas where he is. See, I like to think that maybe, maybe Thomas was the first Jesuit 1,500 years before St. Ignatius, that Thomas had that mind of, of a scientist or an engineer, and Thomas had to see. He didn't want to just take it on the word of others. And when Jesus appears the second time, he accepts Thomas for where he is. He doesn't criticize or blame Thomas either. He simply says to Thomas, bring your finger here, put it in the nail marks, put your hand in my side and believe. And Thomas responds, my Lord and my God. That is the strongest affirmation of who Jesus is in all of the Gospels. It's a phrase that I'm sure many of us were taught from our First Communion on to pray each time the host is elevated and the chalice is elevated, to pray that prayer of Thomas. In inviting Thomas to put, the finger, put his fingers in the nail marks, his hand in his side, Jesus is inviting all of us to touch his wounds as well. But not only to touch his wounds, to touch the wounds of others, to touch our own wounds, those things that separate us from others, those things that make us put others outside of ourselves, outside of our group. He invites us to get in touch with those wounds that they may be healed, that we may then really be transformed by the breath of the Spirit carrying on Jesus' ministry of compassion, forgiveness, and understanding. Today, let us pray that all of us might be able to say with St. Faustina, my Jesus, I trust in you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. <clears throat> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. <clears throat> I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of God's constant love and care in our own lives, we pause to make known our needs <clears throat> and the needs of all our sisters and brothers. For the church, stronghold of trust in the everlasting mercy of God, that the gift of faith be generous, genu generously shared with all who search for it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all who answer the call to a life of civic service, that they may be ever mindful of the sanctity of all life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the wounded, the sorrowing, and the hopeless, that they know God's mercy through the community's love, <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died, that God raise them up on the last day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all of us who celebrate Christ's victory, that faith light our lives and the lives of those we love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. For all those suffering from the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a just and lasting peace throughout the whole Middle East, but especially in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and good Christian marriage, especially from our parish family, and for those who serve the Lord in the single state, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we come before you grateful that you have called us. Strengthen us in our trust in the presence and the love and compassion of your Son, Jesus, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Accept, O Lord, the offerings of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host join together in the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the glorious apostles and martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. While the Blessed Sacrament is still on the altar, I invite you to pray your spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful, and go in peace. Thanks. Our prayer to St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.